Ontario, my home province. In the middle of February, it sleeps under a cozy blanket of snow. But come the warm weather, it's a chef's paradise. I'm Devin Rachkumar. Food and Drink Magazine is sending me on a mission to discover all that's on offer here in Ontario at the peak of summer. Today, Chef Dustin Gallagher. Let's get it going. Executive chef of People's Eatery and the 416 Snack Bar in Toronto is riding shotgun. Throughout my career, I've always heard your name come up. You've worked in some incredible restaurants. 416 Snack Bar is one of my favorite places. All my mates would go there. Amazing date spot, by the way. It's the number one date spot, The man. number one yeah. date spot. <laughs> Today, we're on the road to explore the rich culinary smorgasbord offered in the Blue Mountains on the southern edge of Georgian Bay. It works like this. We'll gather our summer's bounty of food and drink at each of our five stops and then put it all together into one memorable dinner. You know, I've been up north here to ski, but I haven't really explored the food and drink scene. So today we have five incredible stops. I'm really into it. Are you excited, man? I'm stoked, brother. I love cooking with the products from around that area, but I never get the chance to go out and check it out myself. And we're gonna gather all these ingredients and make a really exciting meal at the end of the day. Today's gonna to be an awesome day. Dusty, man, I'm stoked. Thornbury Cider House, I've never been there before. I love cider, I spent a lot of time in the UK and. I've been to some places where they just have cider on tap. It's amazing how much flavor and body and notes that can come from just an apple, purely through the fermentation process. I totally, so I'm excited to see what they're doing over here. Dusty, we're at a cidery. You know how much I love cider. I'm gonna need you to take this for the team and drive. Is that okay? I got you, brother. All right, so here's your flight. So you wanna drink your flight from left to right. This is our premium craft apple cider, the cranberry apple cider, wild blueberry elderflower apple cider, and the blood orange apple cider. And these apples are coming from where? Uh, all local, so within about 10 to 15 kilometer radius, and it's a mixture of 13 local apples. Delicious, clean, yeah. refreshing. That's delicious. Puckering up at the end, very tart. Definitely my favorite so far. Very clean tasting, I love the color. That could be my favorite. We're deep into apple country here in the Blue Mountains. It's one of Ontario's biggest apple producing areas and you can't go anywhere here without seeing an orchard. Goldsmith's Orchard Market grows them in their own backyard. What makes this region so ideal for producing such great produce? There's a lot of reasons, but primarily what makes this region great is the warm days and cool nights during harvest, giving the apples from this region their distinct flavor. Goldsmiths grows a lot more than apples. I think we get some tomatoes. Uh, I love peaches, even if we just snack on them. Let's load up my basket. <laughs> get some corn. They also sell one of the best dairy products to come out of the Blue Mountains. 
Emerald Grasslands is certified grass-fed organic Jersey cow butter. I gotta cut you off real quick. This is my favorite butter here. In, in Canada, 100%, maybe the world, but there's a lot of competing butters, you know, in Europe, but this stuff is fantastic. I think this is the butter that actually tastes like butter. Each batch is barrel churned to 84% butter fat, and the milk coming out of these grass-fed organic Jersey cows, beautifully high fat milk to begin with, so it lends to make an incredibly delicious, really clean tasting creamy butter. What's your favorite thing to make with this butter? You know what, it's the simple things, you know, dunking corn in it, um, poaching in it, cooking scallops in it, you know. This butter can transform any dish into a killer, killer dish. Time to grab a protein to go with all of the great produce we just picked up. Our next stop is Black Angus, known for their specialty game meats. How you How's doing? Going? Oh man. What do you got? I got foie and venison stew. I got crocodile. <laughs> a standard. Some water buffalo. Kangaroo loin, Kangaroo. that's exciting. Yeah. You have so many wild exotic meats. Is there a reason why you carry those? Do you sell a lot of them? Of course we do, no one else does it. So we uh, like to specialize in stuff like that and um, you know, give people a new experience when they come here. Anything else you'd recommend here? Definitely the wild boar. All the stuff in here, you have tenderloins, racks, rack chops, cap pole shoulder roast, ribs. Canadian? 100%. Amazing. So let's get a couple racks. Yeah, let's do it. Sure, how many would you like? One each? Sure. Full rack each? <laughs> sure. You got it. <laughs> All right, guys, there you go. Thanks, Thanks Trevor. Trevor. Enjoy. Take Cheers. care. A lot of what is grown locally in the Blue Mountains is pretty much in your stomach by October. But fortunately, wine made from grapes produced here is available all year long. Next stop, the Roost Wine Company. So we have about eight different wines you can choose from. Really, it's up to you whether you like sweet, dry, whites, reds. We'll kind of cater to your uh, tastes and palate, so you let me know what you like and I will guide you through. Considering the weather outside today, I'm, I'm kind of in the mood for a rosé. We have three, actually. So we have a Pinot Noir rosé, we have a Nine Yards rosé, which is made from four different types of cold climate varietals, two whites, two reds, and a sparkling rosé. It's actually a winemaker's secret which grapes she used, uh, but I do know there's two whites and two reds, and the color of that one actually comes from the inside of a grape rather than the flesh of the skin, which is pretty rare. Cheeky, she's uh, hiding her secrets, huh? It's like any baker, you gotta keep your secrets close to heart. So this year we've produced a sparkling red, so it's a cold climate sparkling red, so it's quite rare. And, so uh, cold climate's your thing? Cold climate's our thing. Look at this view, brother. Stunning. Having this day, traveling out here, enjoying this. I feel that we underappreciate Ontario. We're 90 minutes away right? from our, our turf. Like stepping out here, this reminds me of Italy, my trip to Florence. Yes, like, yeah. It's the rolling hills of Florence, but in our own backyard. Last stop, Kolapur Springs Fish Hatchery. This trout farm speaks to every single one of the values I hold dear as a chef. Use ingredients that are sustainable, nourishing, and local. Bruce, I must say, the trout you raise here is a staple in my house. My kid loves it, my wife loves it, I love it. We can eat it for breakfast, we can eat it for lunch, we can eat it for dinner. That's a lot of fish. <laughs> So what you guys do here is a very old school method. This is very old school. The, the place was built in 1962, and almost everything here is original. But the whole secret to the whole place is the water. This being cold spring water, 
It's very rich with, with minerals and nutrients, but one of the big key things is their fairy shrimp. These things have a punch that nothing else has. Isn't that cool? So this is a full-on ecosystem, from the moss to the algae, to the shrimps, to the trout, to me. That's correct. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're getting a little bit of Mother Nature all the way along. Dustin and I are staying here at Kolapur Springs to make our meal. And Bruce has given us the perfect spot where we can cook it together. This is absolutely beautiful here. The sun going down, looking over the water, we got the fire. We've got some great produce, some great meat, some great fish, some great wine. Some great cider. Everything has come together so perfectly and I'm so excited to get this meal going. All those beautiful ingredients we collected through the day, we're gonna cook it over this open fire and assemble an amazing dinner that we're both gonna slay together as soon as we're done. So first thing we're gonna do is tackle the jobs that take the longest. So the polenta goes on first. The corn, we are gonna cook some in the husk. That's gonna get folded through the polenta. Next, what we're gonna do is get the fish cooking. We also put together an incredible salad full of greens, full of freshness. Making a little apple crumble here. We got some uh, caramelized maple sugar, apples, and a little bit of lemon. We're gonna cook that out a little bit. Then we're gonna hit it with a little Emerald's Grasslands butter, soften it up. Get the boron. And we're gonna put together a beautiful salsa with a garlic and oil lemon vinaigrette. And that's gonna top the boar. Let's feast. Let's eat. This experience has been one of my most memorable experiences to date in my 37 years. This is what I live for, this is what I cook for, and this is what I have passion for. Just to think that I could travel less than a couple hours outside of my city and be inspired so much and be introduced to such incredible food and drink and then have the opportunity to cook it is just, is just a wild, wild, wild ride. Look what we did today, man. Amazing, brother. From sun up to sundown. Cheers, chef. Cheers. On the next episode of Five Stops, award-winning baker Justine Martin and I travel from Sudbury to Manitoulin Island in search of everything delicious. Next stop.